I was experiencing the reality of war. But in fact, it was virtual reality of war. Helpless, totally helpless, and really, really scared. Because I thought I was going to die. I didn't want to die like that. I wasn't ready for what would happen. It was perhaps as unnerving, as intense, and as disturbing an experience as I could imagine. Every time I hear a new noise, I can feel my heart starting to pound. I can, I have a little bit of the shakes with my hands. Here at the Naval Medical Center in San Diego, therapists use video game technology to help Iraq vets overcome PTSD. They take the vets back, virtually, to the place where their trauma began. It's an electronic deja vu. They feel, as if it's real, the sight, sounds, vibrations, even the smells of the Iraq war, but in a safe environment. I experienced it for myself with the help of Dr. Mary Rose Girardi at Emory University in Atlanta, one of the therapy's test sites. I was quickly brought back to my time covering the war in Iraq. Right now, you're sitting in the Humvee. I'd like you to just move ahead slowly. That's wild. Hmm? Now you can certainly back. stand up if you would like, but please be careful. Now as we go along, what I can do is add stimuli along the way that hopefully would elicit some of your specific memory. For instance... Uh, helicopters flying overhead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you something that's a little bit more uh, disturbing. That is really frightening. I mean, you have no idea what's what's happening right now. Just two of our vehicles have just looked like they've exploded. I can't tell if our vehicles are trying to get out of there as quickly as possible. I can feel my heart rate just starting to pound. Looks like we just took some gunfire. More gunfire. Now, I would be asking you, if we were working on a specific memory, to be recounting your memory and confronting that memory. Well, there's one time when we were we were driving along and all of a sudden our convoy came under fire. What happened next? It was nighttime and saw all these tracer fire, I guess, hitting the front of the convoy in front of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all just ducked down into the, into the truck as low as we could go. And you're literally just sort of covering your head and making sure your helmet chin strap is on as tight as it can be. Mm -hmm. What were you feeling at that point? Helpless, totally helpless and really, really scared because I thought I was going to die. I didn't want to die like that. I am very uncomfortable right now, especially as I see, and I'm trying to get this thing to get us out of here as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear a new noise, I can feel my heart starting to pound. I can, I have a little bit of the shakes with my hands. Mm -hmm. What I would be doing also at this point, Sanjay, is asking you to rate your level of anxiety on a scale from 0 to 100. 90. I don't feel good at all right now. Okay, but the goal, as we had talked about, is to confront the fear memory in a safe place. You don't want to avoid it. Confront it and find out that you can habituate to that level of anxiety. You can be okay with it. I have to tell you, I was stunned by my reaction. I mean, I know it's only a simulation, but my reaction was so powerful. What I didn't show you was that I went through that simulation two more times. And I can't say that it ever really got any easier. But I did feel more in control. And from what the psychologists tell me, that's the goal. Face your fears until you can control them, maybe even defeat them. Now, this therapy is only available on a limited basis, but it does seem to be very effective at treating our warriors we're coming home. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, Atlanta.